Hello everyone, it's Chelsea, and I figured today I would share with you a project that I made out of a cereal box. As you can see, this is a Frosted Flakes box, and the first thing I'm doing is opening up the whole box by, by separating the flaps where they're glued, and then I cut off the top section, the top flap, to use as a handle later. And then I'm taking a piece of scratch paper and just like trying to figure out the size that I want to make an image. I'm just going to draw a quick sketch. This is one for spring. Um, you could use it for Easter. You could use it for May Day. The reason that I'm posting it early, well, not that early, but <laughs> there is a Trash to Treasure event from the... Uh, Creative Arts Collaboration coming up next week on Wednesday and this was my idea for it but then I thought well what if people want to make it for Easter so I decided to just post it early um, in case you wanted to make it with your kids or something so I drew a butterfly you could do a flower you could do an Easter egg you could do you know any type of a springy image a bunny would be cute um, just a real simple sketch. If you don't draw, you could use a simple drawing, line drawing from a uh, child, children's book, something like that. Um, there's lots of places out there that you can get something simple. There's also coloring pages that you can print off the internet that would have simple images like this, but um, I just drew it quickly. Uh, I did fold the paper in half and cut it out so that the two sides of the image would be the same because I didn't want, you know, crazy f butterfly wings on this side and you same you know different ones on this side and you know what I mean so um, I cut it out I, I drew it on there and then I cut it out with scissors and then on this bottom part I, I want to the reason I'm making this from a cereal box is because for one it's a really great weight for something like this and for another it's already got a built-in folded bottom so I don't even have to worry about that so I'm using the actual fold on the side of the cereal box as part of my design. And this is this was something that I actually dreamt about. It's weird. I have these weird dreams. And I dreamt it. <laughs> and then I woke up and I said, I need to make that. It's very strange. <laughs> but that sometimes happens to me. So for that little inside section, um, I did use an X-Acto knife and a cutting mat to cut out that right there by the bottom of the, the butterfly's body because I did want that to be an open area. And then before I started my collage, and you could paint this as well. If you were doing with this, kid, with this with kids, you could just use craft paints, inexpensive craft paints, and instead of doing the collage, do painting. But I did want to seal it. Um, make sure that the paper was not absorbent and also take away some of that bright pattern of the printing um, and the, the paper, the printing on there is very slick, makes the paper very slick. So it's a good idea to put a couple coats of gesso on there before you start whatever way you're going to decorate it, whether you're going to paint it with craft paint or if you're going to collage it. So I grabbed a bunch of printed deli paper that I had. Um, a lot of this is a uh, gel printed monoprinting and then like this one is from cleaning up of a stencil um, just laying the stencil on the clean paper and letting whatever excess sprays or whatever I was using I can't remember <laughs> if it was alcohol inks or sprays I don't know but anyway something that's the overspray of it on the stencil and I am using that to cover the handle of my basket this is going to be the part that goes over the top that you can hold on to um, I'm using Liquitex gel matte medium this is like a paste and this is my favorite collage glue I'll be sure to put it down below in a link so that you can find it if you need to buy it um, really easy to use with a palette knife so I'm using plastic palette knives for this project um, this helps to get the glue onto the surface and also to if you go as you go over the top to seal the top of the pieces with a little bit more of the glue it also helps to take the bubbles out as you're doing this the, the deli paper is a very thin paper so it um, it can uh, wrinkle and bubble pretty easy so when I'm using it for something like this and doing just this is very quick collage this is nothing fancy 
this is super quick and <laughs> super fast. Um, I like to use a palette knife instead of a brush. This one in particular, which is kind of a weird um, shovel shaped one. So I used on the bottom and the sides of the box, I used the same paper that I used for the handle. So that will all be cohesive because the handle is going to attach there. And then I'm putting the background onto the butterfly. Now don't do what I did, do as I say. Before you start collaging the outside of this, you should probably paint the inside if you're going to. Um, I was I was thinking I would just leave the inside the color of the box, you know, because it's just a craft paper and that would be fine. But I ended up getting some gesso and stuff on it, and so it wasn't so pretty. So then I had to go ahead and paint the inside of it um, after the fact, and I ended up getting some of the paint onto the front after I'd already collaged it. It, but it didn't really matter, but I'm just telling you, the next step would be to paint the inside if you're going to. Because, yeah, that's what I learned. <laughs> so I am just really quickly tearing pieces of this blue, um, different different pieces that I had this blue color. This is the Dilusions uh, London Blue, I think it's called, maybe, um, in on different roll-offs and different uh, prints and things that I, I made on um, pieces of deli paper. I do a lot of my mono printing on deli paper that I've that has stuff on it because I've used it as under paper like I am right now. This paper that's underneath the project will go into a pile and eventually I'll uh, mono print on that. So that's just kind of how I use up all my stuff. I don't want to waste anything. Um, and I like to collage with deli paper. It's a great weight. It's light, you know, light and easy to use rather than like a card or something like that. Those are harder to collage with. So this is where I was telling you paint the inside beforehand. So here I am painting the inside and I'm just using craft, um, what is it, apple barrel uh, paint from Walmart just to give this a quick coat and cover up all those places where I got some gesso from the other side when I was gessoing it. I just thought it would look better. But as I'm moving it to keep it on my under paper, I'm getting a little bit of that light blue onto my collage. But since the collage is blue and white, it didn't really matter. If that was a very solid something on the other side, I would have been really mad because then I would have had to put more collage paper over it in order to get rid of those spots. But yeah, it didn't really matter in this case. So my next step is to make pattern and design um, for the inside of the wings. Now I've, I've also trimmed off the excess, you know, the collage was going overhanging. Um, as I was putting it on, I trimmed it all off. So now the butterfly shapes are back to normal. And I'm using this same little piece of scratch paper that I made my little quick pattern out of to draw in where I might put some designs and patterns on the insides of the wings to make it more interesting. Um, the collaging with, you know, the patterns of the different paper is interesting, but it's kind of plain, too plain. Butterflies need stripes and spots and things like that, so... I'm just uh, drawing all that out with my pencil right on top of that pattern. And then I'm going to start cutting it out, starting with the biggest pieces. And, you know, laying on those on there to make sure that I, I wanted to have this dark blue ring all the way around the edge. So I wanted to make sure that it was the right size. And then I'm getting out some of those other pieces of paper that I had in that big stack and just cutting away each piece. And then as I'm cutting them out, I am holding them over the paper, but I've got the paper for folded to four times so that I can cut out four pieces at once because the way this is mirrored, it's going to have four of each thing. So I just cut them all out at once. Makes it so much quicker. And, you know, these, these are, like, it, I don't need a die cut machine or something to do this. I, I don't need it to be that precise. 
I just want to color in places and if I don't cut it out exactly perfectly on the line it's not a big deal um, you know I do have little patterns but I'm not trying to make this stressful this project t took two and a half hours to complete um, from the beginning to the end that's how long it took so it's not something I mean I could have made this take all day I could have made little swirls and you know cut out really fussy fancy things no that wasn't what I was going for I wanted it to be cute I wanted it to be kind of childlike like an Eric Carl um, art from like hungry hungry caterpillar I wanted it to be like that pattern and color and the impression of a butterfly but not you know going to the internet and saying okay I want to make a monarch butterfly what does it look like making sure that I have all the little right pieces it's not what I was going for here at all I was trying to have fun I'm still struggling to have fun in my studio and so um, I wanted it to be cute and fun and something that you could do with kids easily if you have some little uh, grandkids or um, your own kids if if you know they're young enough to be interested in crafting with you so you know what I'm saying not too fussy don't don't overthink it people just um, make it something fun so then once I have my main um, colors cut out for the wings that I'm going in and adding smaller pieces on top and I went with kind of cool tones in the back and then brighter tones more warmer tones in the front uh, so that they really stand out from the background like you know oranges and reds and pinks and then in the background of course you get your green and teal and you know what I'm saying in a minute I think I'm gonna get some yellow and I'm just using just pieces of paper that are left over from other projects that are laying around in my studio that haven't been sorted and put away yet <laughs> if you go a couple weeks back you can probably actually watch me jello print most of this stuff because it wasn't that long ago and I've just been using all these same pieces for a lot of different projects probably four or five now um, things that I've done I've used these this same old stack of uh, gelatin printing stuff mono printing stuff so I did skip a bit um, I don't know if it's probably coming up I ended up cutting a section out because if I make something in an hour and a half I can condense it pretty easily to 20 minutes if I make something that's two and a half hours long it needs to have a little bit of trimming before I can get it down to 20 minutes which is my goal is to let my videos not be longer than around 20 minutes so that people will watch them of course YouTube says they should be 10 minutes but I can't do any kind of art and condense it into 10 minutes <laughs> I mean occasionally I have to do that for hops and things it is so difficult to do that <laughs> even 20 minutes can be tough 10 minutes is like wow I hope you I hope my my arts and crafts people that watch my videos have a little bit longer um, attention span than 10 minutes YouTube says that that's how the longer anybody will watch so I don't know it's kind of a funny little statistic I, I try to pay attention when I'm watching videos to see what I do and and sometimes I do fast forward through things like if there is a part that I think is repetitive I'll, I'll just like push the little thing forward a little bit or there is an option to make it go two times fast um, but I don't usually use that I just you just push the little thing forward a little bit until they get to the next step you know what I'm saying so I'm probably a bad bad YouTube watcher <laughs> so then I also wanted to put a few little bits on the inside of the body just to make it stand out from the wings to show that it's a different part of the butterfly so I made these little tubular shapes that kind of look like long beads and then I I snipped out little sections on the side to make it look like it was um, you know how it would be bumpy kind of like a butterfly's body would be dimensional that's what I was going for 
on those little uh, yellowish green ones. And then I made eyes for my butterfly because I thought it would be cuter with eyes. And then um, my kid was like, they don't have eyes. The eyes are kind of weird. They don't have eyes. They have markings that look like eyes, but they're not really their eyes. <laughs> when he saw the basket. Like, you know what? There's no butterfly in the universe that looks like this, okay? If you find one like that, more power to you. Because there isn't one. It's completely fantasy. So then I have these two new fine liner bottles. I see a lot of other people on YouTube using these and I thought I would get some. So I'm filling up this one with some DecoArt Media Fluid Acrylic in Titanium White. Uh, this is a high quality paint so it's got a lot of pigment in it. So I figured it would be a good choice for this. These things have a very needle-like point, and then on the inside of the cap, there is a needle that goes down back into it when you put it away so that it doesn't clog. Um, I hope. <laughs> That's what's supposed to happen. You're, they're not supposed to clog, okay? So we'll find out. So, again, nothing fancy, nothing fussy. I am doing very quick, sketchy lines around all the pieces with the white just to make it make them stand out more. That's it. Not at all fussing. And then I did the same thing with the other one with black, but my black was a little bit thicker, so I went ahead and put some water in there and shook it up. Um, the pack of fine liners comes with two in the bottle. So, I mean two in the pack, two bottles in the pack. There we go. <laughs> so I did one with black and one with white. I figured those would be the colors I would use. I could have also done this same thing with my Posca pens, but um, I don't know, something different. It comes out being a little bit dimensional, sort of. Not a whole lot, but just a tiny bit. So I did that on both sides of my basket. So when this basket is completed, it will be completely reversible. It doesn't have a front and a back. You can use it from either side. Um, if you didn't want to take quite as much time decorating, you could just make the back side, one of the sides, completely just the blue or just painted or something flat, and then only decorate one side if you wanted to. Maybe if you were doing with kids, you might want to do that. But in this case, it's completely um, workable on in, any and all sides. So once I was done with my black and white, then I got out some Stickles glitter and I just went around and added a little bit of sparkle to the project. You know, I like glimmer and shimmer and glitter and glam and stuff like that. So, <laughs> you know, it would be unlikely that I would not put glitter on it. Um, Stickles is just glitter glue. It's got glitter inside of glue. That way the glitter doesn't flake off once it's dry. So then I set that out for a while to dry. I didn't dry with the heat tool. I just let it sit for a few hours just to get everything dry. And then now I'm just assembling it. Those two little flaps um, that I didn't bother to paint, they fold in and glue to the inside of the box. And that's what holds the side on. Um, I hope that when you watched me make it, you understood at the beginning what I was doing. If you didn't, understand or don't know how to repeat what I did, I can certainly give you better instructions. Just leave me a comment um, description box below. Of course, leave me a comment if you like it, you know, whatever, because of course that helps my channel. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, all those things. Um, those help my channel because it tells YouTube that I'm making something valuable that someone else might want to see and then they recommend it to them and that's how my channel grows, that's how people find me. So I know I always say that but I'm going to continue to say it in case you haven't heard it before. <laughs> so then my final thing to do was to attach the handle using some mini brads. Um, I was looking for my bigger brads, just you know, just bigger normal sized ones but I couldn't find them so I'm just using these tiny little pastel colored ones and putting them the whole handle on and that's it for me thanks bye bye